Well, hey guys, what is up? It's been a minute. Um, last week was, it was a crazy week. Not only was it a crazy week, but I got really sick. I had some sort of a stomach virus going on. It was absolutely awful. And uh, so with everything else going on and that stomach virus, uh, I just didn't get a chance or an opportunity to make a video. But all that aside, I'm here now and I wanted to show you guys some of my beautiful garden, which I put in at the beginning of this video. Uh, but I also wanted to show you guys some new friends that we have. So let me show you. Let's set the, uh, set the stage for the story anyways. Uh, I'm done in the barn, as you can see. And um, last week, um, a neighbor of ours down the road wanted to go to the auction to see if we could find him some feeder cows. Um, and, you know, we thought we would take my uncle's trailer and go up there for him. Um, turned out he didn't see anything that he wanted. But I found something that I wanted, and I'm going to introduce you to him now. Um, it's taken a few days, so he's we got him Wednesday, and it is now Tuesday of the following week, and it has taken quite a few days to earn his trust, but he's laying down now, so let me see if we can get in here without getting him up. Hello, buddy. Probably wonders who I'm talking to, because I've not done any videos with him yet. Okay, you ready? Mr. T. I apologize in advance for it being dark in here. We got these um, shop lights a while ago and they're LED and they're supposed to be so great and efficient and everything. They suck. They are no good. So I need to replace them. But here he is. Come down here. There's Mr. T. Say hi. So Mr. T, and I'm going to step up into the light here, but I just wanted to show you him. Um, Mr. T, I know you can't see right now, he's actually a um, brindle longhorn bull calf. So he's, he's about 250 pounds, give or take. Uh, what, I can't remember what they said he was when he went through on the scale. He is brindle and he's um, got his little horns are starting already. And he is built like a brick house. Very odd that he went through the local auction house. Uh, usually you don't see anything like that. You know, it's usually like Angus Cross or uh, Harford Cross. Mostly you see Dairy Cross. Uh, in fact, that's where we got our girls as day old calves. Um, we went up there looking for something very specific when we bought them and we found them as day old calves. We bottle fed them and everything. So when he came through, um, and the neighbor didn't seem too interested in him. I said, Jeff, we need to bid on him like now. And, uh, he, we bid on him and we bid him up and I think we got a really great deal on him. Uh, but the crazy, I mean, I just, I am so, um, dumbfounded that, you know, a longhorn was up there. Like I said, it's so unusual and I know he is a longhorn. Um, so first thing, you know, brindle cows only are certain breeds. Um, and by no means am I a cattle expert, but I've been around cattle my entire life. And, um, you know, I've researched different breeds and whatnot over the years. So plus doing rodeo, you know, in the Western lifestyle, you learn about different breeds inadvertently. And I do know that brindle only comes in certain breeds. Um, a lot of times they're more Spanish influenced breeds like your Corriente. Um, they do, uh, brindle comes in Brahmas. Um, I think there's uh, some others as well but longhorns and longhorns have a pretty unmistakable conformation. Um, you know, kind of longer, flat back, deep chested. Um, and he fits all those things. So I did a Google search real quick to kind of cross reference him when we brought him home and he fits the identifying like outline uh, absolutely perfect. Now, could he be half? Absolutely. Absolutely. He could have all kinds of different things mixed in there. Who's to say? Because he is an auction fine. But I'm calling him a longhorn because, well, he looks the part. Um, now, what are we going to do with him? When, um, when we bought him, the goal was to bring him home, castrate him. And by castrating, all we do is, um, I'll show you the, the thing that we use. 
uh, well, we are on this subject, but uh, I was thinking about castrating him and raising him for uh, freezer beef. Longhorns do really great on grass grazing, and that's what we do. Uh, we don't use any uh, grain at all, so everything we do here is um, grass fed. And longhorns obviously are great for that. I'll show you this contraption real quick. You done shooting bows? Okay. This is the castrating device, okay? And what you do is you put, there's um, certain special gum bands that come, rubber bands. I'm from Pittsburgh, we call them gum bands here. I don't know why. Anyways, they slide over these four prongs here and then you squeeze it and kind of very obviously and let it go. The, the band stays on the top and what happens is they'll become numb and blood flow stops and they just kind of shrivel up and fall off on their own. There's discomfort for 20 minutes until they go numb. <laughs> and then And then they just kind of you know, they fall off eventually. Anyhow, so, um, yeah, that was the initial goal was just to castrate him and, uh, okay, castrate him and use him as a uh, freezer beef. But then when I got him home and I really started looking at him, I said, he is really built nice. And if we're trying to breed, you know, build a breeding program for beef cows, perhaps we keep him <laughs> and, um, use him as breeding stock. So depending on how his demeanor works out, we may be keeping Mr. T. Uh, Mr. T, when he came home off the trailer, decided he was part billy goat and he actually climbed to the very top of that hay into the rafters there before jumping out. And he charged me a couple times. We had a, or as we used to call it, a come to Jesus and uh, yeah he was scared uh and once he once he got comfortable with us he hasn't done it again actually. since not actually i didn't mean that actually Phoebe. athena's such a cat though yeah. all right so i showed you him now when we were up there i always think it's amusing um uh, we love goats as you well know we use goats for their goat their milk um we sell the kids most of the time. We did retain Solstice because she was very special to us. And of course, we're trying to breed, our, build our breeding stock. So we decided to keep her. That being said, her father we don't have anymore because he passed away. And the only buck that we have is Bridget's father. Uh, so we really needed another buck. Now, <laughs> my husband hates goats. Um, because over the years, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of problems with goats, um, living. Uh, I've told you before, goats are extremely fragile creatures, even though there's, you wouldn't think that, but they are, they're very fragile. And, um, over the years we've had problems with, um, meningeal worm and all types of other, settle down girls, all types of other different things. And so, you know, it's really put a sour taste in Jeff's mouth for goats, but when we went up there, I said, you know, can I, if they have another Billy, can I get it? And he said, absolutely not. No more goats. So I want to introduce you to our two new Billies. <laughs> well, uh, we are going to be rehoming this fellow here, the brown guy, uh, because we don't need to. And I'm not ready to let him go just yet because we just brought him home and they were loaded with worms. So we've treated them very intensely with um, warmer, selenium, copper, and probiotics to get their stomach straight. Um, this guy here, probably, this guy here, he's La Mancha and we are naming him Loki. Loki. Yeah, Loki is just absolutely adorable. He has this cute little frosted nose and frosted ears and I just love his markings. Um, and he's black and white. Very, very great. He has a fantastic demeanor. Uh, and his brother, here and this their brothers they came in together and everything um his brother is also very sweet and he is a pretty here harley watch out let me show him the color let me get in here closer see if he'll come closer there he is so he's a really beautiful light tan with an um like cream colored alpine markings on his face and his lower legs are also cream colored i don't know if you'll be able to see because of the overexposure with the sunlight here but as you can see loki is just 
<laughs> he's very friendly. He likes to chew on clothes. And you can see they have the big old worm bellies. So once we get them all straightened out, then um, this guy here will be available to find his forever he's home. He, he is eating my shirt. We haven't named him yet. So if you guys want to... Oof, if you guys want to leave name suggestions for this guy here, he will be finding a home, but you know, I would love for, for you guys all to give me your ideas on names for him. He's a very sweet boy and very handsome too. They, they have a great demeanor. We love La Mancha's. Um, the proof is in the pudding really. So La Mancha's are the only breed of goat that was officially bred here in the United States. And they were bred specifically for longevity of milking. So you can actually breed the doe, the La Mancha doe, and keep her in milk for as long as two to four years off of one breeding before you have to breed her back, which is incredible. Usually you breed every year. That's really great because that's lower input. Um, that enables you to um, not breed her as much, which is actually easier on her body. So it's just, it's really, really great, um, a quality to have. They also have an, a really great milk quality with high butterfat up to as much as almost 8%, um, which is pretty good for a large dairy goat. Um, also, they do give a good quantity of milk as well. Uh, so what we like to do is we like to breed the La Manchas um, with Nigerian dwarfs or kind of crossbreed them a little bit. What what my main goal is to breed a goat that is not a registered goat, okay? I don't care about papers. What I want to do is breed a quality animal that is going to give somebody a quality product. So the offspring of my goats, I want to either put good milking genetics onto their children. So in the case that it's a buck, I want them to pass on really great milking genetics. In the case that I'm selling a doe, I want her to go for a long period of time in milk and I want her milk quality to be fantastic. So that's why I like to cross the La Manchas on the Nigerian dwarfs because Nigerian dwarfs are known for having very sweet, very high milk fat milk. Um, but they're just, you know, I don't enjoy milking them as much because they're awful tiny and their teats are usually small. So this is what, you know, all these things go into consideration when we breed goats. It's not just for what's their confirmation like, what's their breeding like. That's that's not of as much importance to me. Um, what is important to me is the genetics that I'm passing on and are we, are we breeding something that's going to be a great homestead animal for somebody. So... We have high hopes for the future offspring of Mr. Loki. And hopefully we'll get them straight pretty soon. As you can see, the brown one, he has crusty butt. Um, it's no longer wet, but it's still crusty. When he came, he had really bad runs, really bad diarrhea. Um, You're eating me. So we're, we'll have to get him cleaned up and everything now that he's past that. I know you guys can hear Sench coughing back there. He's my older gelding that has heaves and... He's just not had a really great year, um, especially with all the smoke and everything that's come from the Canadian wildfires. It's, it's been rough on him this year, so that's the sound you hear in the background. But uh, what I was saying is the proof is in the pudding with Bridget. Uh, so Bridget is our homegrown doe. She's outside right now. Uh, her mother is Danny, who's doing this beautiful, gorgeous position to show you how beautiful she is that's gorgeous Danny really she's chewing on her foot anyways there you that's Danny that is Bridget's mother and Bubs is the father and he's a La Mancha Nigerian cross she is we've always assumed Alpine Nigerian dwarf because she's smaller no, um, and she has the alpine markings and her ears aren't necessarily droopy so we don't know for sure because she came from auction as well when she was younger and actually has been a fantastic investment she's a great milker um not a huge quantity but very good quality and so when we had bridget we were excited to finally get her into milk because we wanted to see what the product of our breeding program is 
And I am super happy to report that before with just Danny, we were getting not even quite a quart a day. Because I said her qual quantity isn't high, but her quality is great. So not quite a quart a day. Well, we're only milking Bridget once a day because we're kid sharing. She still has solstice on her. And we are now getting half a gallon a day. And the milk quality is fantastic. You wouldn't know the difference between cow's milk and this goat's milk. So that is exactly like, that's what we want. That is the breeding that we are trying to pass on. So... get along with them very well she's very timid um but when she was separate over here in this other pen where the boys are now she would you know she would bully them through the fence but now she's with them she's terrified but we wanted to isolate the boys so that they were separated and you know in case anything was wrong we didn't want we didn't want any cross contamination if you will but they're they're healthy they're just well, I think that catches us up. Um, as you can see, I'm about to be canning hardcore. The tomatoes are, they're there, they're almost there. And all my peppers are looking great. So before long, it's gonna be tomato sauce, you know, stewed tomatoes this year. I wanna do stewed tomatoes because I love them. And it's a great, great other thing to make with tomatoes. I'll be making lots of salsa. I'm also going to try some dehydrating with peppers. I want to dehydrate a lot of them. What are you doing? Oh, sweet Freya. I have a question. Oh, there's Solstice for an update on her. She's, she's getting big. she's getting very big, aren't you? Aren't you? She's over three weeks old now. Oh, stepped on my foot. There you go. Mm -hmm. There's Bridget. There's Bridget. She's a great mom too, which is another really great trait to pass on because there's a lot of does that aren't since she's a first freshener we're really pleased with how she's done uh when solstice was just born we weren't sure we weren't really sure if she was you know right when she was born she didn't want anything to do with her she didn't really want to clean her off she didn't seem too interested in letting her nurse but that all changed real quick and it's been great ever since so. See the nice holy cheek from the other hole? I'm going to have to patch that again. All right. Yeah. So that should catch you all up. Um, not a whole lot else is going on. I have to still finish uh, shearing the rams. Oh, no. The rams are done. Finish shearing the ewes because we are going to be putting them into breeding groups really soon. So I have to shear them, hoof trim them, clean out their pen. I also, while they're out of there and I'm cleaning it out, I want to build the um, wall mangers that I had in mind. And I want to reconstruct the outside wall to make it pretty because it's just thrown together with pallets right now. So I want to make it attractive, you know, make it nice. And so that it lasts for a long time. So I'm going to stack rough cut and use that. I've also been coming up with some ideas for removable panels that I can take down in the summer for the breeze and put up in the winter and keep the snow out. So we will take you along with all of that fun stuff when it's time. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you. I, I have decided to set up a coffee page. A lot of people want to know how to support the channel and maybe they don't live close so they can't come pick up you know, these great onions and stuff like that at the farm stand. So they wanted to know how to support us. And really my favorite thing is coffee. So I set up a coffee page. Um, it's buymeacoffee.com. You can go on there. I will leave the link down below in the description and you can buy me a coffee because we do love our coffee around here. Um, you don't have to, obviously. It's just a fun thing that if you want to do, you can. Um, yeah, because coffee is what keeps all of this happening every day mm -hmm. and uh yeah so i will leave that link down below please remember to like and subscribe i really appreciate it share with your friends and we will see you guys in the next video bye